Well, I got to say, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here with the Vice President. Uh, we have uh, been catching him up on uh, the space policy directives that he has given us uh, through the National Space Council and the President of the United States. Um, we've been together for, I guess, about an hour now, uh, catching, him up on, catching him up on all of the things that we've been working on. But before I introduce him, I just want to say thank you, because there's a lot of managers in this room. And um, we have been awarded, I think now for the seventh year in a row, the best place to work in the federal government. Woo! Now, I got an email from Charlie Bolden, and I want to read you the email that he sent me. He says, congratulations to, he says, congratulations, Jim, to you and the NASA family for your recognition as the best place to work in the federal government for a large agency. While this is a mark of respect for your leadership and the trust that your employees place in you as their administrator, it is, more importantly, a testament to the incredible leadership the incredible leadership team you are privileged to lead, most importantly, the mid-level leaders who work with your employees each and every day and provide the example. They provide the compassion and the mentoring to them, and that empowers them to make NASA the, the best place to work in the federal government. He says, I am incredibly proud to be an, an, an alumnus of your NASA family and send my sincere and heartfelt congratulations to all 18,000 plus of them. Go NASA, Charlie Bolden. Now that email was CC'd uh, to Robert Lightfoot and he responded with the following. He says, this is great. Glad to see we kept the momentum after you left Charlie. I was worried we'd drop without your leadership. <laughs> and then he says, keep it up, Jim. This shows a great transition uh, between leadership from Charlie to you. Thanks for steering this great agency so well. Happy holidays to you and all of your families. Go NASA, Robert. So uh, what an amazing accomplishment. I just want to be really clear, you in this room, you are the ones that made that happen, and um, I'm so grateful for your service to this agency and to this country. Now, I know you're not here to listen to me talk. You're here to listen to the Vice President, and I'm thrilled to be able to introduce him. Um, I've, ha I've been at the, the helm of this agency for about eight months, and since I've been here, we've seen the Vice President give many speeches on space and visit the centers of NASA all over the United States. The president himself, uh, when he got elected, said that we're going to recreate the National Space Council and we're going to put on the National Space Council the heads of all of the departments and agencies of the federal government that touch space. And we're going to put at the chairmanship of that National Space Council the vice president of the United States. Friends, it is very clear as the leader of this agency that this administration is as committed to space as any administration in my lifetime. And we are so grateful for the leadership of the Vice President as the Chairman of the National Space Council. And we're also very grateful for his leadership on Space Policy Directive 1, our return to the moon. And we're going to do it this time to stay. We're going to go sustainably with international partners, with commercial partners. We're going to retire risk. We're going to utilize the resources of the moon. And then we're going to take all of that capability and that technology we're going to prove the human physiology, and we're going to replicate it as much as possible at Mars. So thank you for Space Policy Director. Yes. Thank you for Space Policy Directive 1. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. Thank you for being here. Don't go too far. All right. Thank you all. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you all for making time out of a busy day at a busy time in the life of this agency. It is great to be back at the headquarters of NASA at the dawn of a new era of American leadership in space. And you all are making that happen. And I want to bring greetings from another great champion of NASA. 
and a great champion of going farther, faster, higher in every aspect of American leadership, let me bring greetings and thanks from the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. I'll never forget, Jim, we were actually on the campaign trail when uh, then the candidate who had just added me to the ticket in our campaign said to me when I was making a visit to Florida, he said, he said, I want to restart the National Space Council. I want you to go to the Space Coast and give a speech about it. And he said, would you be interested in chairing the National Space Council? And I said, would I ever? <laughs> and the greatest honor of my life to serve as your vice president. But, uh, but what a profound privilege it is uh, to serve alongside a president, to serve in an administration that is rededicating. Now here, uh, half a century later, when America was astounding the world with our leadership in space, an administration of president that's rededicating ourselves to American leadership in space and American human space exploration. I do want to give some credit where credit is due, first and foremost to all of you. Congratulations on that uh, recent distinction. And uh, I know you join me in thanking Jim Bridenstine for stepping forward to lead this agency at such a critical time. Jim, you're doing a great job, and we're proud of you. I have to tell you, there was a great moment the day that Jim, the day that Jim was sworn into this position. He brought his family by for a photo op. Maybe you've heard that story. He brought them by the Oval Office. And he had Michelle with him, and he had three little kids with him, and it was supposed to be about a five-minute deal. But that was before he realized how interested President Trump is in space. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget, about 45 minutes into the meeting, <laughs> as uh, Jim and the president were going back and forth about the president's passion and vision, his three kids were sitting in those chairs in the Oval Office with their legs swinging underneath the chairs. Uh, I think, Jim, you got a real good feeling. They uh, loved it for the passion this president has all from the Oval Office all across this government. And we're so grateful to each and every one of you. I said it's a new era of American leadership in space, but I'll tell you what, it's amazing to think of just recent accomplishments. Uh, last week, uh, you reached numerous milestones, beginning with the successful arri arrival of the OSIRIS-REx satellite at the asteroid Ben Nu. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. We also saw the start of Expedition 58, American astronaut Anne McLean and the crew flew safely to the International Space Station, and we're proud of her. We're, uh, we're all relieved, I know, we breathed a sigh of relief when uh, Nick, Nick, Haig, uh, Nick Haig and uh, Christina Hammock cook returned safely from the aborted launch, but uh, I'm very pleased because I've been bothering Jim about it uh, to hear that, uh, that, that Nick and Christina will be headed back to space this February, and the mission goes on. <laughs> You'll give them our backs. Okay. And of course, last month, the world, the world watched as uh, NASA did the impossible again when the InSight lander touched down on Mars, and America is still the only nation on Earth to safely land on Mars. Congratulations, NASA. What a great day. I met today with uh, the senior leadership here at NASA. We talked about the progress we've been making since Space Policy Directive 1 was signed. And the President and I are truly grateful for the renewed energy that all of you have brought to this task in implementing, implementing this renewed commitment to American leadership in space and human space exploration, to return to the moon and then to Mars. And uh, uh, I want to make you a promise that uh, we are going to work on behalf of each and every one of you to make sure that you have the resources here that will enable the completion of the Orion space capsule and the space launch system. This year was a year to build. Next year will be a year to fly. I'm going to make sure you get all the support you need, but frankly, I, you know, I'm sure when you, 
when you're out and about or you're traveling around the country or over the holidays when you're visiting with family and people, people meet you that don't know you and find out you work at NASA, you know, you know how cool Americans think that is. Am I right? And uh, i got to tell you, I really do believe the president does as well, that the, all the support is still there. And we really, we really look forward to next year. In fact, I'll be at, I'll be at Kennedy Space Center uh, next Tuesday. We just announced this morning I'll be, I'll be headed to Kennedy Space Center uh, to uh, watch a, uh, the launch of the first GPS-3 satellite. But next year is going to be a very busy year. I just encourage each and every one of you to keep your head down, keep working hard, but get, get used to the pace, okay? Because uh, we're absolutely determined uh, to once again lead the world back into the exploration of space. And it'll all be driven out of here. It'll all be driven on the basis of, uh, of the 18,000 NASA personnel that all of you oversee all across this country and around the world. It'll be driven by innovators. It'll be driven by our courageous astronauts and our private sector partners. But I just, uh, I just want to encourage you on, uh, encourage you to bring your best efforts uh, in the days ahead. Um, but also, I, I hope you'll also bring uh, the idealism that first sent America into the vast beyond. Uh, I think of another president who said, we do not do this because it is easy, we do it because it is hard. And America's willing to do the hard thing, willing to lead and I want to assure you, this administration from the president on down wants to start leading in space once again. And we're looking to all of you to make that happen. But I hope uh, as we approach this very special season, my Jewish friends just completed eight days of Hanukkah. And I better start shopping pretty soon <laughs> for Christmas. All of our kids will be joining us at the vice president's residence. I also think about, I think about uh, an anniversary that we're celebrating this month as well. And make no mistake about it, those words that, uh, that the astronauts of Apollo 8 read, seeing that first Earth rise from the horizon of the moon also, also animate the American people's passion to explore the great beyond. Because as has been the tradition throughout our country and tens of millions cherish this today as my family does, those words that were spoken then are worth repeating today. That the crew said, we're now approaching lunar sunrise. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. And it's a great message to remember in this special season. That in the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. And the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. As you do your work in the days ahead, as you refire the work of NASA and renew American leadership in space, uh, I want you to do it with ingenuity, with professionalism, with energy, but know that you also carry the faith and the aspiration of the American people who see his hand in the vast beyond and long to understand it better. So thank you very much. God bless you. God bless the work of NASA. Go NASA!